Good morning. Welcome to Hindu News for Prayasis, 25th November 2022. First article highlights Supreme Court questions lightening speed of election commissioner appointment. We are well aware that from last few days, Supreme Court giving series of observations on the election commissioner appointments. It began, it began to say election commissioner conditions of services transaction of business act 1991 prescribed under section 4 of the act there should be 6 years tenure till 65 years of age however supreme court said there was a decline in the office of election commissioners because according to some reports in 2004 the election commissioner was in office only for 200 days which is a clear violation of law so supreme court giving series of observations in a in the in the constitutional case anup bharnawal versus union of india 2015 now the constitutional bench taking the arguments and giving observations on the case it was yesterday which supreme court of india seriously highlighted the concern over faster appointments and here rajesh astana justice rajesh astana mentioned that it is files are moving less than 24 hours with a lightning speed and however the questions are raised in the court about the violation of law particularly section 4 of this election con election commissioners conditions of services act 1991 these articles are these arguments are quite useful in writing our mains answers particularly under the section electoral reforms let us wait and watch for the for the developments. However, uh, Pratap Badu Mehta, a political scholar who observed, who, uh, he, who recently wrote an article in some other newspaper, he mentioned that this kind of involvement of judiciary in election commissioner, election commissioner's appointment has to retrospect the judiciary itself. Because even judiciary also doesn't have any opaque process in terms of collegium appointments. And here, they, uh, Pratap Banu Mehta highlighted from the book Public Institutions in India some other serious concerns like there is no fixed number of election commissioners it was left to the center discretion and the other election commissioners right now not enjoying constitutional status and no security of tenure which will lead to create some kind of conflicts between election chief election commissioner who has a constitutional authority and other election commissioners and these are his observations let us wait and watch for the next coming days for the complete analysis by different authors next article editorial talks about discrete in northeast we are well aware about northeast states and their complexity in terms of demography we are also noted that there are several tribal groups exist in northeastern region of india and along with the diversity, even problems are also huge. Apart from the traditional insurgency and other border issues, nowadays from last few years, in fact last year also we witnessed that there was a huge conflict between northeastern states. The problem arises from the colonial past because at that time Assam and Arunachal Pradesh somewhat enjoyed uh, good status whereas other groups other tribal groups are submerged by the colonials in the past however we are correcting the mistakes by granting them statehood for example Meghalaya got statehood by 1972 from Assam and even Arunachal Pradesh and other states also got statehood also but here conflicts are common for example Assam, Mizoram are having border issues even Last year we have uh, clashes also. Then we have Assam, Meghalaya over the issues, a small village called as Merapani. And even we have other issues with, between the Nagaland and Mizoram and other states. So what we can suggest for this article or what we can also highlight. So this kind of issues could be resolved through a new, a new maps, through consensus and negotiations. Second thing, we could also include technology technology in drawing new maps and we have to explore the constitutional mechanisms to resolve this kind of issues for example we have interstate 
commission interested council under article 263 which can which can advise it which can advise on disputes discuss the subjects of, uh, and also common concerns and it can bring better policy coordination further we do have journal councils and we have a separate northeast journal council also which can also settle the issue, issues and also niti ayog can become a, a partner in this dialogue so all these things are quite important for us and resolution of this border conflict is important not only for the peace and prosperity and also to counter the insurgency groups and to raise the spirit of cooperative federalism next article talks about opening stance so next article talks about opening stance this article highlights about recent trade pact between india and australia you are all well aware that india and australia are mutually mutually conversing countries in several dimensions for example both had colonial past both had english as a common language some colonial cultures for example membership in commonwealth cricket and even cultures like bollywood and recent tollywood also quite fam famous in australia now australia is having uh, different challenges for example australia facing security threat from the china with the recent deal of china and solomon islands i request you locate solomon islands and uh, then australia is also having some so verbal verbal war or you can say some aggressive statements from china and even india on this backdrop australia is trying trying a lot with convergence with the like minded countries this conver convergence can be seen from the quad from the trilateral supply supply chain resilience initiative among the australia india and indonesia and the recent joining into indo pacific economic framework apart from all these things australia and india are converging in parliamentary democracy and also rules based global order demands here the deal highlights uh, some important aspects for example it is going to lead elimination of elimination of tariffs and uh, it will create 100% el uh, elimination of 100% tariffs duty on on an around 6000 categories goods and uh, no restrictions on the labor intensive exports for example textiles apparels agriculture fisheries pharmaceuticals leather etc right now we are facing a kind of tariffs to 4, 4 to 5% on our commodities now slowly it will reach to zero further australia agreed to give mfn status to 120 sub sectors in it education health sector it also announced 1800 annual <coughs> yog, yog, annual visas for the yoga teachers and even indian chef and also it announced that students can have post study work visa for up to one and a half year to four years and it will also it also announced that one lakh student visas for india it is a very welcome step and uh, apart from that both countries agreed to raise the trade from current level of 31 billion us dollars to 50 billion us dollars so this kind of deals are very important and one significant factor of australia is australia is one of the chief and very important raw material supplier to india for example it is supplying coal during the coal crisis also they helped india in a coal supply a coal supply not only for the dharma power plants even for the steel it's supplying fertilizers aluminum oxides gold and gold sometimes even re exported with value addition so like that in australia is a critical partner in our uh, uh, in our economic development so further i want to conclude that this kind of trade pacts are very helpful in promoting economic survey uh, ambition of uh, uh, export oriented growth which also boosted countries like china singapore south south korea and japan and also it will boost india's relations with australia in getting the uh, the so called cutting edge technology because australia is somewhat advanced in artificial intelligence and iot so this trade pact this economic cooperation trade pact is going to help further negotiations of comprehensive economic partnership with india and australia is moving out and this is a truly diplomatic win because this deal excluded the demand of australia of allowance of trade to india so here i would like to quote australian prime minister antoli albanese observation who said that uh, 
let us open the uh, let us open and link Australia with 1.5 billion people market. And finally, this is a welcome step for mutual cooperation, strengthening economic growth, and it will also strengthen our partnership to achieve the goal of developer India by 2047. Next article talks about can poor countries afford to go green. These are quite interesting points for interview also. You can read the inter interview but I am not uh, I am not giving you exact details here because I am giving you summarized format. I am telling you that the can poor countries afford to go green. Absolutely they are lacking infrastructure, funds, technology, skills and most importantly they are not having know-how or uh, know-how or the guidelines to handle that's the reason cop cop 27 in sharm al sheikh in egypt demanded this loss and damage compensation cop 21 in paris demanded uh, 100 billion us dollars as a fund for the developing countries and to share the technology so these are the points we can read next us remark comparing modi to saudi arabia unnecessary so this is where uh, we have to understand so in diplomatic relations, we will find some kind of aggressive statements. Recently, United States Commission on International Religious Freedom uh, was released and it, sta it stated that India is a country in which there is a series of ongoing freedom violations and it also criticized India in a uh, country which is not uh, taking care of minorities. Okay, And it placed even in the countries of a particular concern which is having a concern over the violation of minorities. So these articles are not very very much important. You cannot write in the answers also. But one thing where we can write is challenges between India and the USA relations. You can write this kind of articles like India on one side USA is trying to collaborate with the other side India is was India was criticized by USA with this kind of reports. Next article, India, Iran discuss development of Chabahar port. See, Chabahar port is in news, it's series of initiatives. For example, SCO countries uh, demanded a greater, greater push in Chabahar very recently. And even next year, India going to take SCO uh, presidency also. Apart from that, uh, last year, we also sent uh, food materials and some basic commodities to Afghanistan from Chabahar port itself. The Chabahar port located in the Gulf of Oman region and this uh, Chabahar port is a chief a significant project which will connect India with Afghanistan For in Afghanistan with the connection of Dalaram Jaranj railway network it will connect with the Central Asian countries which will fulfill the ambition of international north-south transport corridor so this is uh, about Chabahar project and uh, recently we have uh, Inauguration of inauguration of a port, Shahaz Bisti terminal, and uh, with the help of this terminal, India supplied 75,000 metric tons of wheat to, to Afghanistan 2020 and 2021. India supplied 40,000 liters of eco-friendly pesticide to Iran to fight locust. Okay, so these are the some of the important observations from the Chabahar development and we need to wait and watch because china is entering into the rail project of chabahar project and even uh, iran cancelled the role of india in rail project of chabahar just wait and watch for the next developments next article shah says bjp will bring uniform civil code so here the series of articles from the election of uttarakhand gujarat and even uh, recent observations of law minister talking about Im implementation of ucc the basic information is UCC comes under Article 44 of DPSPs. However, we need to remember that uh, election, law commission law commission recommended that there should be a, a piecemeal application. There should not be a, 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 at a time implementation. They should go at a piecemeal approach. And law commission 2018 mentioned that it is neither necessary nor desirable at this stage. Okay. So there are series of issues involved in this. Let us wait and watch for the next things. Then we can have a separate audio on this. Next, two articles here. Millets in the mainstream, how Odisha Kutia Kond tribe rediscovered a plate for the man's food. Then center pledges to promote millets internationally in 2023. These two articles can be read at a time. Here one has to observe that India is 
demanding india demanded to adopt uh, international year of millets 2023 and it was accepted by un also now we are going to have next year in the name of international year of millets and it is well noted that this year 2022 is noted as united nation year on artisanal fisheries and aquaculture okay so next year it is in international year of millets however one thing is important millets are considered to be a nutritious cereals cereals and also they are a, a wonderful products which can work out for example as per the ministry of union ministry of union agriculture so agriculture ministry mentioned that millets can tackle the health challenges like obesity diabetics and also which will provide a fiber rich food for the for the human beings at the same time they are very uh, easy to cultivate no need of high irrigation facilities and also fertilizers so it is pro poor farmers at the, at the same time it is pro health also so that is the reason india is supporting this international year of millets we will have a separate uh, audio on benefits of millets then Pakistan PM names ex spy master Asim Munir to be new army general and also we have recent appointments to Malaysian prime minister also so both names are important not very much is important for example we have Pakistan general Syed Asim Munir he is somewhat important the former Bajwa is now living and um, Zawed Bajwa is quite controversial person now we have Syed Asim Munir and then we have a new prime minister in malaysia anwar ibrahim just just look at malaysia that's is enough next article russia nuclear ice breaks and militarization of arctic region you know arctic and russia is somewhat old concept old conflict because 18th century onwards russia when it started to process of europeanization it want to control the arctic region in a greater manner however it was initiated by nicholas tsar nicholas 2 and also earlier peter the great now we are seeing that uh, vladimir putin is also now tightening his control over the arctic region and there uh, in the arctic region he even uh, having his military bases military bases and he deploying the vessels security military vessels also so that militarization of arctic region is a concern even written in number of series of international magazines that is militarization is going on so here arctic is a competition field for the different countries for example nato countries are joining in the military actions there now china is finding a route there to uh, to expand its uh, place in the arctic region from indian point of view we do have in 2007 arctic research program and um, in 2022 we even announced uh, the first policy called as arctic policy india and arctic uh, building a partnership for the sustainable development and india is also part of uh, arctic council which includes uh, different countries and it is an intergovernmental forum to which we discuss about uh, sustainable and peaceful cooperation in the arctic region so this is quite interesting and just look at arctic region and uh, its relevance thank you so much and jai hind